So, so I wrote some things. Can I just you share this? Because I think it answers you the question. Can. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was doing something else, but never mind. Oi, Teal Deer, fucking get on it. Good fella, get on it. Fucking Vizzle Dizzle on Sparky, on Skeptor, on Sargon, on Sage. Everyone in the room. Fuck, Thunderfoot. Fuck, on your feet. Bro, if everyone does a video response to this and puts it on their Patreon, then between us all, we might make as much money as the enslaved dwarven blacksmith who spent the morning forging Anita's gold encrusted ringlets of doom. Right, <laughs> let's get the fuck on with it. Oh, yeah. Heartfelt apologies to Captain Candy and the Magina Brigade. It's about feminism again. <laughs>
It needs so we don't call them queers and coloreds anymore. Jesus, I can't take you anywhere. I learned to see through a sociological lens and understand the world as it really exists. When you're describing the world as it really exists, and dealing in such lofty revealed ontology, Anita, it's very important that you don't just say a bunch of total fucking woo. As a series of intersecting social systems. Once you have a systemic and institutional framework, you see how oppression manifests in many subtle ways under the systems of what Bell Hooks calls white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. Chat, you hate white males, Anita. No, no one gives a fuck about your woo. No one understands your woo. You're a racist and a sexist, and you make obscene amounts of money being a racist and a sexist. Because you were clever enough to zero in on the kind of racism and the kind of sexism from which you are allowed to make money in your society. If you were alive in the Deep South during slavery, you would be talking about the tyranny of the Negro Beast, because that would be the kind of racism that would make you money back then. So not only did I have to learn how to be a feminist, I also had to learn how to be a feminist who understands systems. Feminism is a system. You, daft, cunt. All isms are systems. The only people who think their system is not a system are the people who think their system is a god! I had to learn how systems of oppression are maintained by our participation in them. Woo! But they're also self-perpetuating via paths of least resistance. Woo! And as such, are larger than any one person's choices. Woo! Okay, so this is the part where I say things that may ruffle some feathers. You just told us there are no individuals and everyone is one helpless mass of human, except the white men. And now you're going to ruffle feathers, I Bitch, what feathers? The bird already flew out of the window and shat all over your fucking gazebo. Um, but I think it's a critical discussion to have. Every discussion you have is critical. So ever, over the past few years, I've become increasingly worried about the direction mainstream internet feminism appears to be headed, at least in the West. It's a little bit narrow-minded, isn't it? I know a guy in India and a guy in Israel who would both love to talk to you about the direction feminism is taking in the East. It's the same direction it's taking here, Anita. A downward helix, screwing us all into the fucking swamp. Um, unfortunately, many contemporary discourses in and around feminism tend to emphasize a form of hyper-individualism. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I used to think I was an individual. I used to think I was a thinker. But then I realized I was suffering from a condition called hyper-thinking. <laughs> so, so I treat it by drinking more ultra-water and getting plenty of double extra size. Which is informed by that neoliberal worldview. I've just figured out what you mean by neoliberal. You don't mean anything at all. You're just using it as a linguistic string, an intersectional string, if you will, to try and link individuality with the left wing. <laughs> individuality has nothing to do with either wing, Ms. Sarkeesian. You're just looking for a way to tell people that they're all free thinkers while simultaneously telling them they should all agree with you. Is that about bang on the fucking money? More and more I hear variations on this idea that anything that any woman personally chooses to do is a feminist act. This attitude is often referred to as choice feminism. Is it? I've never heard anything called choice feminism before. Pretty sure it's an oxymoron. Choice feminism posits that each individual woman determines what is empowering for herself, which might sound good on the surface, but this concept risks obscuring the bigger picture and larger fundamental goals of the movement um, by focusing on individual women with a very narrow individual notion of empowerment. It's official, ladies. You cannot be entrusted to empower yourself because you're too fucking narrow. You need us bloated, wobbling, half-tree, half-steakhouse, washcloth crones to decide on your behalf what you find empowering. Because our interests are simply more important than yours. It erases the reality that some choices that women make have an enormous negative impact on other women's lives. Holy fucking shit, woman. It's bad enough telling a child that a fairy dies every time you say a swear word. You are telling all adult women that every time they make any choice, they risk hurting other women. 
And I presume you're also telling them to choose feminism. <laughs> and that this should be the last independent decision they ever make. So it's not enough to feel personally empowered or be personally successful within the oppressive framework of the current system. Now, a few simple translations to help you make sense of feminist arguments. When they say misogyny, they mean blasphemy. When they say feminism, they mean God. When they say women, they mean Jesus. And when they say raped, they mean baptized. And when they say patriarchy, they mean men. Crush the patriarchy means crush the men. So, do bear this in mind, because she's about to say patriarchy. Listen out for the context. Even if an individual woman can make patriarchy work for her, it's still a losing game for the rest of the women on the planet. Even if the men are working for us, it's still not good enough. They gotta go. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that some choices have ramifications beyond ourselves and reinforce harmful patriarchal ideas. <laughs> Don't make choices that affect other people. Because that reinforces man rules. About women as a group and about women's bodies and our wider shared culture. And because of how systems of oppression intersect and compound one another, it's women of color, indigenous women, women living in the global south, women with disabilities, queer women and trans women who bear the brunt of these ramifications. No, it isn't. It's everyone in the fucking world. Everyone is suffering because of your bullshit. Poor people's lives are getting fucked up. Rich people's heads are getting fucked up. There are way more people in the world than there ever have been and they're unhappier than ever. And it's because your solution to every problem you ever encounter is to put women in your victim box and men in your asshole box and to viciously shame anyone who tries to climb out of either box because you're a bunch of self-aggrandized talentless megalomaniacs whose bigotry has gone unchallenged for generations. Um, shit happens. Choice feminism also obscures the fact that women don't have a real choice. We have very narrow set of predetermined choices within patriarchy. It, it gets better and better, ladies. You know how I was telling you not to make choices? Well, fuck that out the window anyway, because you were never even making those choices. Men still exist, remember? That means you didn't decide what to have for breakfast this morning. You didn't decide to have three children with three different dickheads. You're letting the men around you make all the decisions for you, see? Whereas you should be letting feminists make all those decisions for you. And you've already chosen this because you don't have a choice. Women can choose from a pre-approved palette, but we cannot meaningfully choose liberation. We cannot choose a way out from our constraints, at least not without ending these oppressive systems that limit our options. Is anyone else shuddering, like actually shuddering at the thought of how many women are hearing this, being told you are incapable of meaningful choices and, and autonomous liberation. And they're actually listening to this and nodding and smiling and going, yes, you're right. I'm incapable of meaningful choices. This is so beautiful and true. And I positively flinch at the thought of the men watching this, smiling gleefully and thinking, yes, yes, women have no choice. Oh God, John McIntosh wrote this. Oh Jesus, of course he did. Oh fuck, get off, get it off my life. So when we talk about free choice in today's world, we're really talking about a very narrow spectrum of choices that are amenable to patriarchy. It's four o'clock in the afternoon and this is real absinthe. Don't judge me. It's the only way I can massive. <laughs> All right. So when we talk about how to be a feminist, for me, that means being committed to something much larger than ourselves. Yeah, rich fat women. It's understanding what role you play in our collective movements for liberation. You play the termagant crack whore on the 15th floor. It's re-examining our desires and interests and understanding how those are often shared by capital, sorry, how they're often shaped, maybe shared, who knows. I hope someone knows, Anita, you're actually fucking about with people's lives here. 
uh, by capitalism, patriarchy, and white supremacy. Yeah, you hate white males. We've established that. Rich white males. Well, you hate nice things happening to white males. So, you mollycoddle everyone in our society except the white males. And for some reason, this society turns out quite a lot of hardworking white men. It's understanding our own intersections of privilege and oppression and how that will fundamentally change our behaviors and attitudes and values. Anita, there is only one value that you value, and that is value. It's realizing that being a feminist is a lifelong learning endeavor and that we will make some mistakes on the way. The whole thing was a mistake. The whole thing, all the way back to Abraham. Wrong. At least entertain the possibility, Anita. And we should be compassionate to ourselves when that happens. C c compassionate to ourselves? Anita, do you... Anita. Compassion is something that most earth creatures reserve for other people, by definition. Impassion is something we do for ourselves. Compassion is something we have for other people. But you would, you would rather keep your compassion to yourself. <laughs> okay. Every time you make a mistake. It's realizing that others will make mistakes and we should extend that compassion to them as well. Oh! 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 Holy shit, Anita. It's been an emotional journey. Feminism is not about striving for perfection. It's about striving for justice. And never, ever, ever getting it. <laughs> we are all connected. We are all bond together. Oh, isn't that nice? A sense of togetherness is important. Well done, Anita. What is it that bonds you together? We're under the oppression of patriarchy. And that is why you're never, ever going to get justice, let alone perfection. <clears throat> See, if you actually ended oppression like you say you want to, then you would have nothing in common with your fellow women. <laughs> because that's all that's left in your fucking conscience. Anita, an unprinted cardboard cutout of a human being with the word VICTIM scrawled across it. You don't want women to be individuals. You don't even want them to be women. You want them all to jump into a fucking hole and cry so you can see them as a single mass and continue to rinse them for their hard-earned money like the gormless little shyster you are. And as such, our personal actions or inactions do have a harmful effect on other women, especially those from the most marginalized communities. I was tempted to at least give you some credit for acknowledging that women's actions do have consequences, but it's pretty fucking obvious what you're saying. You're saying women who aren't feminists are hurting feminism. If you're not a feminist, then it's your fault that some women are poor. But once you come over to the good side and toe the feminist line, you can rest assured your actions have seen their last consequence. If you did something good, feminism did it. If you did something bad, Patriarchy did it. See, a gaggle of rich old cunts can sit up there spreading lies and hatred about men for generations, filling young boys' heads with the idea that men are evil. And then when those boys grow up hating each other and killing each other, it's meh. Boys will be boys. You can completely lay waste to the world with your hatred and then throw your hands up and say, what happened to the world? It's madness. It's actually a form of madness. It's in the cluster B spectrum. It's, 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 you know, it's that moment when you're saying, your entire movement is bad. And then when someone replies, well, I disagree with your individual opinion. And you respond, how dare you attack my entire movement? It's that thing. Where you just don't give a fuck about logic. Or fucking consistency. Or anything except your devotion to your favourite fucking meme. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if more than half the people in the world suffer from this condition. So at this point we should probably take that entire cluster out of the DSM and replace it with a condition called sanity. Because honestly, sanity is a very rare mental condition. <laughs> it would take a double episode of House just to diagnose it. Not religious and not feminist. <laughs> Wait, sanity. I think I've heard of that. I realize this isn't a popular thing to say. 
Yes, it is, Anita. They just fucking applauded you for saying it. You keep doing this. You can lead your army of cheering, adoring devotees, and you can say with a straight face, what? I don't have an army. I don't have anything. Everyone hates me. An army is applauding for you, and you are telling that army you do not exist. Your applause does not exist. And that army just goes, hooray! We're really doing something! But feel go- feel- ugh. I can't say it apparently. That's how bad it is, no. Professional speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Five grand for an hour. Um, but feel good, personal empowerment is not how to be a feminist. No, it's how to be a human being. That's not good enough for a feminist. <laughs> and it's absolutely out of the fucking question for a man. In order to be a feminist, we have a responsibility beyond ourselves. We have a responsibility to each other, and we have a responsibility to work for the collective liberation of all women. Yeah, it, see, it's pathological selfishness. Twisted up with doublethink and wrapped up in woo so it looks like altruism. Gynocentrism is not selfish, even if you're a woman. That's your message. And everyone's eating it the fuck up like it's five loaves and two fish. Yeah, you're right, guys. This totally isn't a problem. Shut up about feminism, will ya? Never mind the Marxists in charge of our universities. They have nothing to do with any of our problems. I know you're actually trying to build a new platform, guys. But when this anthrax sprinkling siege tower rocks up next to you, just shut the fuck up and let them get on with the anthrax sprinkling, will you? And why aren't you building a new platform? Yeah, fuck nice. Fuck off, all of you.